how bacteria in food can make you sick. There are two different types of bacteria involved with food. The first type of bacteria involved with food is known as food spoilage bacteria, and the second type of bacteria is known as food poisoning or pathogenic bacteria. So let's take a look at food spoilage bacteria. These type of bacteria involved with food are easily detectable and can make your food go off, in other words, grand certification. We are able to see it, taste it, and more commonly, able to smell it. These act as warning signs to tell us, do not eat this. These type of bacteria are generally not dangerous to your health, but certainly should not be consumed. We usually need high amounts of bacteria in terms of the number of colonies to be able to cause illness. Let's take a look at pathogenic bacteria. These type of bacteria involved with food occur in very small amounts of bacterial colonies, which are able to make you sick. These are the type of bacteria that we are most concerned with, as you cannot see it, taste it, or smell it. There are no indications that this bacteria is present in food. Within this broad category, there are specific bacteria that we are concerned with in the kitchen environment. This applies to both the home kitchen and the production kitchen, such as restaurants, hotels, and food service. E. coli are one of the most commonly known food poisoning bacteria, and what are what we call indicator organisms. E. coli originates from our gut as well as from other mammals, such as cattle. If E. coli originates in the gut, it therefore tells us that fecal matter is present and occur as a result of unhygienic practices. E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria that is naturally occurring within the environment, mostly in soil and naturally in our gut. Most E. coli strains are not pathogens, in other words disease-causing bacteria. However, E. coli can exist harmlessly with humans and is an important part of our internal flora. This means the internal makeup of various bacteria in our gut that allows us to consume our food. These essentially keep bad bac bacteria and pathogens at bay. However, there are strains of E. coli that are dangerous, such as E. coli 0157H7, which causes hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, and it can be severe. In general, E. coli is a bacterium that should be avoided. E. coli mostly occurs in our gut and in raw meat, and becomes an indicator of unhygienic practices that may have taken place. Two perfect examples of this are when you do not wash your hands after going to the toilet, or when you do not wash your hands after handling raw meats or fruits and vegetables. The next bacteria we will look at is Staphylococcus aureus or Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a gram positive bacteria that naturally occurs on the skin and nasal passages of humans. Usually this bacterium is harmless in small numbers but can cause skin infections if numbers get too high. In food, Staph aureus is particularly concerning because it produces a heat stable toxin which can cause severe food poisoning. Heat stable meaning that the toxin can survive cooking temperatures. I can, I'm sure you can already see why Staph aureus is used as an indicator organism in food and in hygiene. Because Staph aureus occurs naturally in the nasal passages and on the skin, those that are natural carriers, usually 10 to 15% of the world's population, require antibiotic treatments to keep this bacteria at below infection rates, so that those that work with food do not cause further infections. Of course, hand washing and preventing the touching of the nose are key areas in preventing contamination from taking place in foods. So finding these bacteria in food and or on hands or food handlers tells us that there's been some break in the food safety pillars and the potential for causing food poisoning increases. These are two perfect examples of the two most commonly occurring food poisoning bacteria.